Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. An honor to meet you in this great annual meeting. Thank you for the committee and Dr. Chuang who has invited. As we know that cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of death in the world, where the main cause is lifestyle, including diet. There are many factors that influence the diet, ranging from culture, belief, economy, and the food industry revolution, and technology to the borderless. So I would like to share about dietary recommendation for reducing cardiovascular disease. In this meeting, firstly, I will briefly explain about Indonesia. Secondly, I will describe a cardiovascular disease in Indonesia, especially about its prevalence and risk factors. Thirdly, I will explain consumption food of risk and protector factors. And then I will describe a little bit about Indonesia question and food pattern relating to the risk of CVD. Fourthly, I will talk about Indonesian government programs regarding to prevention of CVD. Finally, I will talk about dietary recommendation. This is a map of Indonesia. My country is a fast and densely populated archipelagic country. Indonesia located on the equator between continent Asia and Australia, Pacific Ocean and Indian Ocean. Indonesia consists of 17,508 islands with a land area of 1,905 million kilometers square, an ocean area to time land area. Therefore, Indonesia is called a maritime or nautical and agricultural country. The big island is Java, Sumatra, Kalimantan, Sulawesi, and Papua. And the popular island in the world is Bali. There are also two small island groups called uh, Maluku and Nusa Tenggara. Even we have 700 languages, our unified language and the official language is Bahasa Indonesia or it called Bahasa. We have more than 300 distinct ethnic. In term religion, we have Muslim, Christian, Hindu, and Buddha. The Muslim is the largest religion. And we are a country with two seasons. Based on data released by the Indonesian Central Bureau of Statistics, Indonesia population census in 2020 reached uh, 270.20 million people. That increase of 32.5 uh, 56% from 2010. The productive age is about 70.72%. Males, 50.58%, and females, 49 and 40%. And elderly is 9.78%. The population growth rate is 1.25%. From the population pyramid graph, Indonesia entering period of the demographic bonus phase with the composition dominated by the working age population, Indonesia has a poor opportunity to maximize the demographic bonus as long as the population is in healthy and productive status. This blue graph shows the composition of population based on the gener generation name starting from pre-boomer until post-gen Z. About cardiovascular disease in Indonesia, WHO in 2016 states that 73% of death in Indonesia are due to non-communicable diseases, of which 35% related with cardiovascular disease. Based on national basic health research, uh, data in 2018 showed that the national prevalence of cardiovascular disease for all group age is 1.5% or 1,072,19 people. The elderly have a high risk to compare with the younger age. 
CBD is more common in female than male. And in urban area, more than rural area. Stroke is the disease that leading causes death in the cardiovascular disease group. Preference by province in Indonesia range from 4.1 until 14.7, with the national preference number is 10.9%. This number increased about 56% from 2013. The trend uh, of in the incidence through increases in line with the age. The proportion of male and female almost in the same, but more in urban area than the rural area. As we know, one of modifiable risk factors is behavior or lifestyle, such as unhealthy diet, lack of physical activity, smoking, and alcohol consumption. Unhealthy behavior has an impact on increasing blood pressure, blood sugar, blood lipid, overweight, and obesity. According to the Indonesian National Development Planning Agency, of the 10 risk factors that are most affected death and disability adjusted life here, in 2007 until 2017 uh, were poor diet, followed by high blood pressure, high fasting blood sugar, and tobacco or smoking behavior, which indicated a risk of uh, a risk for cardiovascular disease and diabetes. I will explain a poor diet pattern after this. The result of Hussein's study on the risk of cash data of 2013 showed that uh, hypertension contributed 20 to 25 percent of all coronary heart disease and 36 to 42 percent of all stroke both in male and female. While my uh, while female with hypertension on high risk to coronary heart disease and stroke. Risk of death data in 2018 showed an increase in hypertension compared in 2013. The contribution of hypertension as a CVD risk factor was 29.6%. The proportion of individuals with hypertension increased with age. Risk of death data in 2018 showed an increase in hypertension compared with uh, 2013. The decontribution of hypertension as CVD risk factor was 29.6%. Uh, the proportion of individuals with hypertension increases with age. The proportion of individuals with hypertension increased with age. Total cholesterol level are also important risk factor for CVD. In even or coronary heart disease, the risk now, total cholesterol level are also important risk factor for CVD. In the even or coronary heart disease, the risk for male was slightly higher than female. While in the case of stroke, the female will with cholesterol uh, higher than men. Smoking in men is a substantial risk factor for the vascular effect of stroke. In this slide, we see the smoking is second risk for coronary heart disease and stroke in male. And based on that uh, risk test data on 2018, smoking of uh, age more than 10 years old is about 28.8%. Overweight females are more at risk of CVD than men, as male. Overweight females are more at risk for CVD than male. The number of overweight and obesity increases from year to year. In 2018, the proportion of overweight, overweight females are more at risk of CVD than male. The number of overweight and obesity increases from year to year. In 2018, the proportion of overweight 
and Opus GP were 13.6% and 20.8% uh, respectively. Obesity contributes about 19 to 43% of to the risk of the cardiovascular disease. The diabetes mainly to smell have a high risk for of the incidence of coronary heart disease than female. Diabetes mellitus. Diabetes in male have a higher risk of the incidence of coronary heart disease and stroke than female. From this stats data, we show that increasing in prevalence uh, diabetes mellitus during 2013 to 2018. The national prevalence is 10.9%. Uh, in Indonesia, we use Perkini or Endocrinologist Association consensus, and there is a little bit a difference between 2011 and 2015. And uh, this shows uh, in 2018, with the consensus Perkini 2011, it's about 8.5%. Uh, and using the 2015 per canny is uh, about 10.9%. If we look to the physical inactive from the risk assessment data, we can see that in 2018, more individuals with less active. In 2018, more individual with less physical active. In physical inactive data, we can see that for physical inactive data from risk dust uh, 2018, we see that uh, there is an increasing of uh, the prevalence physical inactivity than 2013. 2013 is about 26.1%, and 2018, uh, the, the prevalence is 33.5%. 30, Global research on burden disease state the poor diet is factor behind cases of hypertension, diabetes, obesity, and other component of cardiovascular disease. Excessive intake of processed food is associated with overweight. Consumption of soft drinks is associated with obesity in adolescents. The use of high carbohydrate refined foods such as white flour, added sugar, or to food and beverages Chips and crackers, especially those consumed as snacks, add to the high risk of CVD. The high intake of instant noodle and sugary drink also causes an increasing in a C-reactive protein. It's um, a marker of cardiovascular risk. Unhealthy food that is cheap and easy to get. Attractive packaging. Uh, unhealthy food that is cheap and easy to get, attractive packaging and ready to eat, as well as an intensive advertising in television and social media, affect the high consumption of the poor diet. Unhealthy food that is cheap and easy to get, attractive packaging and ready to eat food, as well as an intensive Advertising in television and social media affect the higher consumption of poor diet. This slide describes the consumption of food that can be increased the risk of a CVD and the food that can be a protector CVD. The blue box shows the Indonesian Balanced Nutrition Guide. And Based on a survey of individual, based on a survey of individual food consumption in Indonesia in 2014, showed that 11.8 percent of Indonesian people consume more than 50 grams sugar per day, and 53.7 percent uh, of Indonesian people consume salt more than 5 grams per day, and fat, an intake of fat in Indonesian people is about 27%.
this blue box shows Indonesian balance nutrition guide. And the left side shows the high consumption of, and the left side is high consumption of uh, food. And the left side shows consumption of food of free tractor. And the right side shows the low consumption of protective food. A survey of individual food consumption in Indonesia in 2014 showed that 11.8% of Indonesian people, 11.8% 11 of Indonesian people consume sugar more than 40 grams per day. And 53.7% of Indonesian people in, uh, consume salt more than 5 grams per day. And from uh, the fact, 27% of Indonesian people consume about uh, more than 67 grams per day. However, when we view from per capita consumption data today, there is a tendency for increasing sugar intake above 50 grams per day. The thing that worries as is saying the consumption of salt in Indonesia, almost half of the Indonesian people in consume mm -hmm. the thing that worries us is saying the consumption of salt. Almost half of Indonesia people consume salt beyond the recommended limit. It's mean that more than five grams per day. The thing that worries us is seeing the consumption of salt. Almost half of Indonesian people consume salt intake more than five grams per day. The salt comes the salt comes from cereal and its processing and this come uh, this salt come cereal and its processed and spicy and its process. 27% of Indonesian consume fat intake more than recommendation. If we look from the consumption of sugar, salt, and fat together, we find that 29.7% of Indonesian people exceeds the recommendation. From the protective food, such as fish, the average consumption of fish and its processed food about 78.4 grams per person per day. It's slightly lower than the recommendation. Meanwhile, food production in Indonesia is much higher than what is consumed. Meanwhile, food production in Indonesia is much higher than what is consumed. In Indonesia, intakes of fruits and vegetables is low. In this case, that's data. In 2018, only less than 5% of Indonesian people consume vegetables and fruits more than 5 grams per day. From this slide, we see that the food consumption in Indonesia is at risk of increasing incidence of CVD. In this slide, I would like you to know the traditional Indonesian meals. Indonesian meals menu pattern consists of rice as a staple food plus one or two main savory dishes. Mostly, uh, the dishes in Indonesia is taste salty, and then plus condiments. Typically, savory dishes in Indonesia is a chicken. Eh, typically, savory dishes in Indonesia are chicken, beef, fish, tempeh. Or tofu and vegetables. This set Indonesian meals, nasi pecel, represent the menu patterns of Indonesian. It consists of rice, two savory dishes, chicken and tempeh, and vegetable and condiment, crunchy peanuts. And as well, if we see from the uh, nasi urap. Also, we can see from nasi urap, rice, chicken, and coffee, vegetable, eggs, and tempeh, and shrimp crackers.
The following pictures is a variety of Indonesian dishes that come from various regions but are popular and preferred nationally. The red dot, orange, the green, and the black plus purple dots are indicate the content of food groups that must be considered. The red dot indicate the using of high oil and the orange dot indicates that those meal contents of the orange dot indicates that the meals use the thick coconut milk in cooking. The black dots indicates that these meals using the high fat proteins such as ribs eye. The purple dots show that these meals using a high of sugar. It's tasty, very sweet. Based on the profile of Indonesia that has been described earlier, we see that Indonesia has applied a challenge to reduce CVD. Modifiable risk factors such as high intake of risky foods, but low intake of protective food, inactivity and increased smoking, we are seeing the incidence of overweight obesity, hypertension, and diabetes mellitus. Then, this might affect to coronary heart disease and stroke. It is requires sporadic and comprehensive movement for Indonesia, namely modification of lifestyle. The necessary of modification are the necessary modifications are eat a diet that contains more protective food such as fish, fruit, vegetables, and the diet based on the calorie needs, based on personal food preference, cultures, and other nutritional therapy that is being carried out. The necessary uh, modification are, first is eat a diet that contains more protein food, such as fish, fruit, and vegetable, nuts, and so on. Second, diet based on calorie needs, based on personal food preference, based on culture and other nutritional therapy that is being carried out. Third, the diet with more attention intake of natrium, fibers, and low fat. Awareness is an important thing in reducing the burden of cardiovascular disease. Education and counseling for lifestyle change are needed deeply. The nation government has done some programs for tackling non communicable diseases, including CVD. The programs, namely DERMAS and Food Based Dietary Guidelines, and the MAR IKAN or Light to Eat Fish. DERMAS or the Healthy Living Community Movement is a systemic and planned action carried out jointly by all components of the nation with awareness. Dermas, the Healthy Living Community Movement, is a systemic and planned action carried out jointly by all components of nation with awareness, willingness, and ability to behave in a healthy manner to improve the quality of life. Dermas focus on three aspects. Dermas, the Healthy Living Community Movement, is a system made and plan action carried out jointly by all components of the nation with awareness, willingness, and ability to live healthy for everyone to realize the higher degrees of public health. Dermas focus on three aspects. Do physical activity, eat fruits and vegetables, and check health regularly. <clears throat> Six activities of Gurmas is increased physical activity, improving clean and healthy life behavior, provision of healthy food and accelerated nutrition improvement, increased prevention and early detection diseases, improving environment quality, and improved education of healthy living. Tumpang gisi seimbang, a rounded pyramid-like shape, is the dietary guideline for Indonesian people. 
This pyramid shape imitates the shape of tumpang. Tumpang is specific Japanese dish which serve in a cone shape and arranged along with the side dishes. Tumpang is often served at celebration or Thanksgiving events in Indonesia. Tumpang dishes imbang is quite a daily food composition that inform types and amounts of nutrients in accordance with the body's need. There are four there are four principles that is the first food. There are four principles of tumpang gizis imbang. That is the uh, the first food. There are four principles of uh, tumpang gizis imbang or balanced nutrients. That is the first food. Food safety, physical activity, and weight monitoring, including five food groups and their recommended portion. Tumpang this is imbang has four levels. The bottom level is the staple food, above with fruits and vegetables. The next level is source of protein, and the top is limiting the intake of cells. And the top is limiting of salt, sugar, and oil. Plus, uh, drinking white water, eight glasses. And then, based of the corn, consists of activity, washing, washing hands, and monitoring weight. Tumpang Gisi Seimbang is guide a daily food composition that informs types and amounts of nutrients in accordance with the body's need. There are four principles. That is the first of food, food safety, physical activity, and weight monitoring, including five food groups and their recommended portion. Tumpang Gisi Seimbang has four levels. The bottom level is staple food. The next level is fruit and vegetables. And next level is a protein source. And the top level is limit to use about salt, sugar, and oil. And plus, recommended to drink water about eight glass. And the base of the cone consists of activity, hand washing, and monitoring weight. There are 10 nutrition messages and tumpeng gizi seimbang. It variety of food, it plenty of vegetables and food, it high protein food, it a variety of staple food, limit consumption of sweet, salty, and fat food, it breakfast every day, drink enough safe water, red label, sorry, red food label, wash your hand, and perform adequate physical activity. A plate guide we call easy peeling makan cook or the content of my plate. These guidelines are the application of tumpang gizi seimbang. This plate illustrated the recommended proportion of food groups to be consumed each meal. This my plate illustrated the recommended proportion of food groups to be consumed in each meal. The Minister of Health of the Republic Indonesia as in the regulation number 28 of 2019, established that the average energy adequacy is 2,100 kilocalorie per person per day at the level of consumption, while the protein is 57 grams per person per day. Recommended dietary allowance for proteins is about 10 until 15 percent of total energy and fat about 20 to 25 percent of total energy that comes from 10 percent of saturated fat and 10 to 15 percent from unsaturated fat. In addition, the nutrient that needs to be limited is natrium, sugar, and oil. This set menu is represent in this slide, there is a set Indonesian menus represent of recommended dietary elements, tumpeng gizi seimbang, and my plate for one meal. The energy is about 
700 kilocalories. Consists of rice, 1.5 portion, fish or exchange if one portion, tempeh or exchange if one portion, papaya or other fruits, 1.5 portion, and vegetable, 1.5 portion. There are three recommendations for at-risk individuals, such as those with hypertension, obesity, dyslipidemia, and diabetes mellitus, follow a recommendation of uh, ACC, NHA, and DES diet. There are three recommendations for at-risk individuals, such as those with hypertension, obesity, dyslipidemia, and diabetes mellitus, follow recommendations from the ACC and AHA, as well as the principle of DAS diet. Lifestyle recommendations include consuming vegetables and fruits, whole grains, low-fat poultry, peanuts, and consuming low-fat milk, low-sugar, sugary drink, or sugary drink, and red meat. <coughs> The composition of nutrients is adjusted to the condition of each individual. For, for example, if this lipidemia present, so the nut uh, for example, if this lipidemia present, for example, if this lipidemia present, fat for example, if this lipidemia present, fat, especially uh, saturated fat, is less than 7%, and polyunsaturated fat is maximum of 10% from total, uh, total energy, and reduce of the calories from trans fat, and try to reduce percent from calories from trans fat, and cholesterol is recommended less than 200 mg per day. We still doing the recommendation to reduce cholesterol less than 200 mg, considering that food containing cholesterol generally also contain high saturated fat. And for other condition, if edema or an in term of natrium, if edema and an in term of natrium, uh, and in terms of natrium intake, in terms of natrium intakes, if edema or hypertension present should be reduced to 1,500 milligram. Indonesia has some fermented food to preventivity. <coughs> Among others is tempeh and fermented glutinous black rice. Tempeh is a traditional Indonesian food that has started worldwide. Tempeh is fermented from soybean, which can be regarded as a superfood because of many health benefits. Tempeh contains uh, tempeh contains protein and low fat because it is made from the whole soybean. So tempeh has the fiber also. Tempeh contains tempeh contains high protein and low fat. Because it, it's made from whole soybean, tempeh contains dietary fiber. Tempeh is rich in calcium and iron as well. As a result of soybean fermentation, tempeh is possible is possible as a good source of protein. As a result of soybean fermentation, tempeh is possible as a good source of prebiotic and good for digestive health. Tempeh also contains isoflavon. Another food ingredients being developed. Another, another. Other ferment, another fermented food is fermented glutinous black rice. This food contains this food contains functional food that plays a role in preventing heart disease. 
such as antisia, such as antocyanin, phenols, and antioxidant activity, which is thought to be an effect on preventing metabolic syndrome. The nutritional, the nutritional value of these two products, the nutritional values of these two products are shown in this slide. Nutrition values of tempeh, nutrition uh, values of black glutinous tape. As previously mentioned, Indonesia, which is the first entity, has various types of food that are unique and favored by the Indonesian people. Unfortunately, some of these dishes contain of high fat and or high sugar or high salt. One the efforts, one of the efforts to reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease through a culinary dietetic. It means that how we try to make over one of the efforts to reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease through a culinary dietetic. It means that how we try to modify Indonesian food or Indonesian cuisine, it means that how we try to modify Indonesian food that are high in fat and sugar to be healthier. Among others, through the use of herbs and spices that are abundant in Indonesia and cooking techniques, garlic, turmeric, ginger, and cinnamon are, are rich in antioxidant. And scientific studies suggest that they are also potent as anti-inflammatory, which has a good effect on lowering lipids and blood sugar. Moreover, it has a low calories and are relatively not expensive. Energy for day one menu, almost 2,000 kilocalories. And for the day two menus, uh, it's about 2,100 kilocalories. And the nutrient composition, carbohydrate 63%, protein 15%, and fat 20%. 20%. And uh, almost resembles in a day two. Energy in day one menu is about 19.42 kilocalories and in day two menus is about 20.56 kilocalories. The, the nutrient composition is almost the same. Uh, in day two is a bit little uh, in protein and fat. And I other and other nutrients in uh, seems to be in accordance with and other nutrients seems to be in accordance with the recommendation. This is the day one Indonesian modified menu. We use the rice. We use the rice as a staple food for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Animal protein sources are just from low fat. Protein such as uh, we use rice as a staple food for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Animal protein, we choose a low low fat protein such as egg white, um, fish that contains of omega three, and and for vegetable protein, we use tofu and tempeh. And then on chom. Sterol and stenol are obtained from vegetable and fruit, as well as being a source of antioxidant. The breakfast menu is steam rice. Let me explain a little bit about the menu. This is a uh, oat white egg with stick sauce. And this is a uh, steamed tofu cakes of fricado tahu kukus and the vegetable is chap chai. 
chapchai itself is becoming Indonesian cuisine, which come from Chinese origin. Chapchai itself is an Indonesian cuisine, which come from Chinese cuisine. Chapchai means dishes that contains of 10 elements of vegetable and protein. But in this menu, we only use the uh, but in this menu, I use the vegetables only, but the name still chap chai. And the breakfast, we have steamed rice, a macaron fish soup, stir fried tempeh, salted mixed vegetable. It's a bit different with chap chai, and fresh vegetable and sliced pineapple. For dinner, we have a uh, steam rice with ikan lilit. Ikan lilit, ikan lilit or confluated fish is a typical dish from Bali. Ikan lilit or confluated fish is a typical dish from Bali, which originally used uh, the coconut milk, but in this case, we changed with the skim milk. For, for mid morning, we use pisang kukus or steamed banana. Uh, the type of pisang we call is uh, pisang tanduk. And for mid afternoon, uh, we use beer. The cooking method is our stir fry, boiling, steaming, and burning. Distribution of food proportion based on Indonesia my plate or easy peeling pool. And for mid-morning snack, we give a pisang kukus or steamed banana. The type of pisang is uh, from pisang tanduk. And for the afternoon, or I mean mid-afternoon, uh, we use a fruit here. Like the first day menu, the second day menu also follow a uh, like the first menu, the day, like the first menu, the day two menu is also follow uh, my plate or easy peeling call. Still, the uh, similar with the first day menu, there are three times meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, plus two times of snack. It's a typically of Indonesian menu pattern. <clears throat> for the first, for breakfast, we use cassava as a step of food and rice for lunch and dinner. For breakfast, we use a cassava as a staple food. Cassava is widely used widely consumed by Indonesian but not as uh, but mostly as a snack for breakfast we use cassava and for breakfast we use cassava as a staple food cassava is widely consumed by Indonesian but as a snack but mostly as a snack but mostly as a snack and for lunch and dinner, we use uh, rice as a staple food. Animal proteins are, uh, animal protein are chicken, eggs, and fish. We use spicy and anti-inflammatory herbs as well as ginger, turmeric, or ginger and turmeric. We use a spicy and herbs who have uh, anti-inflammatory effects, such as ginger and turmeric. <clears throat> let me explain uh, this. Let me let me explain the menus. Uh, this is singkong kukus or steamed cassava, and for protein, braised chicken soy sauce, and uh, we use tofu as a uh, tofu, and we have vegetable. Oh, sorry, let me explain the menu. 
This is a sing kong rebus. Eh, let me explain the menus. This is a cassava, uh, uh, steam cassava, and this is a uh, braised chicken soy sauce and big tofu vegetable cakes. Then two of vegetables. Then our original, our original fruit salad or snake fruits. For lunch, we have steamed rice and tempeh in turmeric sauce and gado gado. Gado gado is almost a gado. It's mixed vegetable with boiled egg and peanut sauce. And for dinner, we have steamed rice, ikan pindang or simmered fish, um, roasted potato cakes, and salted mixed vegetables, and fresh lettuce and uh, papaya. Sorry, it's not pineapple, but papaya. Um, ikan pindang, eh, pindang, is a cooking technique similar with similar. Pindang is a cooking technique similar with simmer, simmering. Both onion, eh, sorry. Pindang is cooking technique similar with simmering. First, both the red onion, garlic, chili, turmeric, calendar, lemon grass until boiled. And then push pindang is a cooking technique similar with simmering. Bold red onion, garlic, chili, turmeric, ganjal, and lemongrass. Then put the fish into it. Wait until soft. That is the how to make ikan pindang. And the uh, fourth meat. And for mid morning, we use fruit ambon banana. It's typically in Indonesia, banana. Bread. For mid morning, we use fruit ambon banana. It's typically banana in Indonesia. And for mid afternoon, uh, we for afternoon snack, we use spicy fruit salad, or we call it rujak. It contains of cucumber, pineapple, bangkwang, and a spicy sauce from and spicy sauce from palm sugar and chili. Finally, let me to summary my presentation. Indonesia is a large African country with a variety of cultures and influence the characteristic of its food. Unhealthy life of Indonesia is at risk of increasing the prevalence of cardiovascular disease in the future. Several attempts to prevent CVD have been done through GERMA's Balanced Food Guide and GERMA Arkan program. So, the role of digestion and nutrition is needed to provide nutrition education and develop culinary dietetic in accordance to law. Eh, sorry. So the role of dietitian and so the role of Indonesian dietitian and nutritionist is needed to provide education and develop and develop culinary dietetic in accordance with local health. Thank you for your attention. Terima kasih.